Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Matthew Sports Talk. Um, this is a special edition, um, as we will be going, as I will give my 2020 season and postseason analysis of the Minnesota Twins. Um, a couple weeks have passed since the Twins were knocked out from the playoffs by the Houston Astros, um, two games to nothing in the wild card series, so... I've had a little time to sort of breathe and collect myself and make this a little bit more level-headed than I would have if I made it back right after it happens. So, um, let's just start off by analyzing what happened in the postseason. Two very, very quick games. Um, That just the lack of offense was just astonishing. Um, the two, I mean, one run in each game, both of them produced by Nelson Cruz. So Nelson Cruz, you did your job. But um, Jack shit from Kepler, Rosario, Buxton, and Snow. Those guys were MIA. I don't know what the hell happened, but. Um, yeah, I, it, it, it's frustrating beyond no hell. Um, and you know, it, this year was different in the postseason as it was in years past. The, the pitching was there. The pitching kept us in the game for the most part. Um, but our offense just couldn't do shit. Um, yeah, um, I mean, I'm sorry, this might not seem level-headed to some people, but... On, with a franchise has 18 straight playoff losses dating back over a decade. You think throughout the year something would have changed. And starting and you know, I have to give credit to Rocco Baldelli. When he took over this team, I thought he wasn't really going to do much. Last season, he they he surprised the hell out of me. Twins gained over 100 wins. Um set an MLB record for home runs hit in the season by a team. Um, I mean, I thought things were going to be different. Um, and I mean, obviously, when you bub against the Yankees in the playoffs, there's not really much you can do. So, that, that was last season. But this season was a little bit different. This season, it wasn't so much about the offense. It was about the pitching. The pitching actually was decent this year, for the most part. Um... But yeah, we'll be getting to that in a little bit. So, um, yeah, frustrating. Another exit from the playoffs. Um, so yeah. Um, so I have my talking points right here. Um, so I'll be going pre, somewhat in deep on some of these. So, um, ultimately factors that I think. Um, so the new additions this season. Ultimately ineffective, except for Kenta Maeda. Kenta Maeda was sensational. Um, definitely worth um, the price for what we dealt away from him. Um, Donaldson, I was really excited when we got him in the offseason. He was plagued with injuries, um, so I don't really blame him for that. But I was still disappointed nonetheless. Uh, Alex Avila, backup catcher, was absolute crap. Um... Rich Hill was decent, but, I mean, at his age, I mean, the, he, he, I wasn't expecting much from him in the first place. And Homer Bailey was irrelevant. So, um, yep, that's for that. So, going forward, here's what I feel like needs to happen. Um, I think we have to tackle the weak spot um, when it comes to our fielding, especially our, inf our the infield. And I feel like, sadly, that's Polanco. I mean, I like Polanco. He's a good guy, and he's been a good player. But he regressed offensively and defensively this year. Um, so, yeah, um, I feel like we have to... It, it, it's time for him to go. Um, I think that would not only benefit us, I think it will benefit him. Because I certainly... Certain there are some teams in the MLB that need someone like him at shortstop. 
Um, second thing I think needs to happen is Rodgers needs to be removed from a closing role. Um, he had four losses this season, and he almost had five because there was a game against the Milwaukee Brewers. Kenta Maeda almost had a no-hitter. Rodgers came into the ninth and absolutely blew it. I mean, luckily enough, the Twins eventually won in extra innings, but Rodgers has been bad in the closing role this season. Um, and I feel like there are three three people in the bullpen that are perfect replacements for him. Uh, number one would definitely be Tyler Clippard. He's been the closer bef in the closing role before, and he's been sensational. So that would be my number one option. My number two option would be Matt Whistler. A new addition this year, and he has been stellar, absolutely stellar. Um, so that being my number two option, my number three option, I'm a little bit uneasy about, but I feel like this would definitely be better than Rogers. Is Sergio Romo? He had he he started off the season well, but he did kind of regress a little bit near the end, and he was ten, he was prone to walking people and um, sub sub subsequently giving up runs, but. I would still feel better Romo closing than Rodgers. So, yeah. Um, and once again, I like Taylor Rodgers, but come on. A closer, you're supposed to close out the game. You, you, the, your team gives you the ball, and you have the lead, you're supposed to close out the game. And Rodgers failed to do that at least five times this season. So, there's that. Um, so, yeah. With getting rid of Polanco, you... I feel like you need to add speed at the shortstop position um, because I feel like Buxton is your only real, real run threat um, when it comes to gaining him on base. I feel like you need somebody else that can also steal bases and create opportunities. So with that, I have a list. Um, I have a list of, and these are players that are going to be unrestricted free agents next year. Um, so for, oh, um, so yeah, um, so yeah, um, so three shortstops that are going to be for sh unrestricted free agents next year, um, Didi Gregorius, Marcus Simeon, and Freddie Galvis, those are three big names, and they all have speed. And there's also a fourth name. He's he, that it would be a contract for year, contract year for him next year, so he won't be unrestricted. But Francisco Lindor, I feel like if you throw enough money at Francisco Lindor, it might cost you 30 million, but it would be worth it. Um, I mean, and it would be worth. I mean, you don't even have to throw 30 million at Francisco Lindor. Um, you could throw maybe $20 million at any of these other guys, at Gregorius, at Simeon, or Galvis, and I feel like it would be worth it. Um, so yeah, there's that. Um, the rotation needs to be redone. Um, and this goes along with, so, so there's players to get rid of, obviously, for the Twins. I've discussed Polanco, and then I've also said Alex Avila was crap, so I need to get, him, get rid of him. Um, we'll talk about that later. Um, but yeah, I think the rotation needs to be redone. Um, you keep Barrios at the number one spot, and then Maeda at number two. And then back at the number five spot, you take a young guy who you've seen before, the, either this season or year season. So the one player that I, that I like for the fifth spot in the rotation is Devin Smeltzer. Um, he's been pretty good. Um, and he definitely can start and sustain games. Um, the other guy, um, I'm not 100% sure about, but um, he has proven himself um, in certain spots this season, um, Jorge Alcala. Um, that one's a little bit more of a stretch. I'd rather take Smeltzer over Alcala at this very moment, but if they put Alcala in the number five rotation spot, I wouldn't be against it um, because he has been solid. Um... So in turn, and then you'll also need two new people to add to that rotation. So um, there's a couple other players. So Jake Odorizzi, sorry, um, he was played with injury for the season. 
Um, and I feel like even though last season he he was stellar, um, I feel like it just hasn't worked out. Um, Rich Hill, who's over 40 years old, I don't feel like you should hold on to him. Homer Bailey, um, once again, old. And then Michael Pineda, also old. I like the guy. Um, I think he's a st uh, stellar pitcher, but... I mean, between the injuries and sub suspensions, he hasn't done what we needed him to do. So, sorry, Panita, you gotta go. Um, and then there's a couple of uh, starting pitchers that are unrestricted free agents that I would love if the Twins picked them up. Um, there's Tyler Chatwood, there's James Paxton, there's Julio Tehran, and there's Jose Quintana. Um, even if just picking up one of those players would be make me happy. Um, even just picking up one stellar um, rotation pitcher would make me happy. So, there's that. Um, also, you need to add to the bullpen. Um, because, like I said, outside of Clippard, Whistler, Romo, Duffy, and May, who do you really have in the bullpen? Um because Rodgers has regressed. Um, so, I mean, there's Pedro Baez, Hans, Hansel Robles, and Michael Waka all out there that are unrestricted free agents next year, and, the, and that could be relief pitchers. So that there's that. Um, and then you got the replacement for Alex Avila. So replacement. Uh, uh, Mitch Garver did re regress this season, so... Um, depending on who's on the market, I mean, I have two unrestricted free agent catchers listed right here, uh, Caleb Joseph and Jonathan Lucroy. Um, Caleb Joseph, I would feel safe playing at the number two spot behind Mitch Garver. If you bring in Jonathan Lucroy, I would start Jonathan Lucroy. Um, so yeah, so there's that. So overall, um, I mean... Twins, you win back-to-back -back division titles. That's great, but you gotta do more than that. You got <laughs> if you win division titles, you gotta prove that you can contend um, in the playoffs, and you, you, you haven't done that. 18 straight playoff losses, dating back over a decade. Something's gotta change. Um, something's gotta change. So that's my Twins season and postseason analysis um let's just talk about the mlp playoffs in general since um we're talking baseball in general um so continuing on so what happened in the wild card outside of the twins being swept by the astros uh padres beat the cardinals two games to one um the Padres are a very young team, showing potential. Um, the Marlins swept the Cubs two games to nothing. That was surprising. I, I thought the Cubs would would uh, uh, play play better than how, what they did. Um, Dodgers swept the Brewers two games to nothing. Not surprising there. Um, the, Af the Oakland Athletics winning... And three games against the White Sox. That was a little bit of a surprise. I was thinking the White Sox had a chance, but no. Um, Braves being the Reds, two games, nothing. Not surprising. The Yankees sweeping the Indians. That was surprising. Um, I originally thought the Indians were going to win that series. Um, I, I thought it was going to take three games. Um, and if the Yankees won in three games, I wasn't going to be surprised. But the Yankees won in two, so... Uh, Rays beat the Blue Jays two games to nothing, not surprising, and we already know what happened to the Twins. So moving on to the Divisional Series. Um, the Rays beat the Yankees in five games, and I was excited as hell. Because the fact the Astros beat the Athletics in four games. So now, the way the way the Ray... <laughs> wow. Blah, 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 blah. Um, now I have somebody to cheer for in the ALCS. And that would be the Tampa Bay Rays, because obviously if the Yankees have won, it would be Yankees and Astros, and I hate the Yankees in principle, and the Astros 
beat the Twins and are generally regarded as cheaters, so that would have been hard. But now it's like I can cheer for the for the um, Tampa Bay Rays. And then the Dodgers swept the Padres three games to nothing. Not surprising. Dodgers, very, very experienced playoff team. And Padres, very, very young team, rel- relatively inexperienced in the playoffs. And then the Braves swept the Marlins three games to nothing. Not surprising there. So, moving on, the a- the ALCS actually started tonight, and the Rays won 2-1. to one. So, hey, yay! Something I can cheer about. And then tomorrow starts the NLCS with the Dodgers and the Braves. So, I mean, overall, I think if this is the matchup that I want to see in the World Series because I wasn't expecting it, and it'd be very, very interesting. I want the Tampa Bay Rays against the Atlanta Braves. Because I feel like that would that would be interesting. Um, I wouldn't also mind the Dodgers and the Rays. I don't want to see the Dodgers and the Astros. That's happened. I've seen it. I don't care for it. So, um, so yeah, cheering for pretty much any team except for the Astros. Um, so yeah. So that was my. Twins postseason analysis um, and a little bit of MLB playoff talk. So my next Matthews sports talk will probably come, I would say, Wednesday or Thursday, um, because I want I want to talk about I'd probably come early Thursday because I want to talk about um, because the NFL still has two more games and one of them is on a Tuesday night so. Um, stay tuned for the next episode of Matthew Sports Talk. Till then, this is Matthew signing off.